Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, JCT reception at the House of Commons. Um, thank you for coming. I'm Richard Saxon, Chair of JCT, and uh, this event is to celebrate the completion of the JCT 2016 edition. And it's great. Uh, it's been an unprecedented sales success. It's been moving out of the uh, digital warehouse at an enormous rate. <coughs> Things are already coming in which will form the in-tray of the, of the group, considering what the next one will be. But it doesn't look as though it is going to be just one. I think we, we have futures of all sorts and shapes emerging uh, that we, we're going to need to have forms of contract for. We're actually on the point of starting work on a, on a, a wholly new product from JCT, which is an FM standard contract. Um, it's the Wild West out there. There are no... Well, the vast majority of FM contracts are bespoke. Uh, they're usually not very balanced, and uh, there is a call for a, a better product. And we're working with the RICS in particular uh, on defining that. Another work in progress is on forms of contract to support uh, what we are calling Level 3 BIM, but we don't know what it is formally yet. We shall very shortly be told because I believe we're only a month away from having the new task group's uh, budget for how it's going to spend its £16 million uh, between now and 2020. Um, there's growing expectation that there will be many more business models, not just the standard one, for delivering built environment to um, its customers. And uh, the Construction Leadership Council, um, which is the body appointed by government to focus the relationship between the industry and, and the government is working on the possibilities. And one of the first chances you will have to hear about that work is at the JCT <coughs> Pomi lecture, uh, which is our next knockout social occasion. Um, that's going to be on November the 8th, and uh, I'm glad to say it's going to be, uh, we're going to be uh, talked to by Anne Bentley, the global chairman of Ryder Levitt Butnell, and a member of the Construction Leadership Council who is tasked with studying future business models. Um, so that will be the 2017 Covey Lecture in November. But now I want to give the floor over to Victoria. As I said, Victoria is Chair of the JCT Traf um, Drafting Committee and Head of Construction at CMS Cameron McKenna LLP. And Victoria, please come and tell us why we should buy even more copies of JCT 2016. So, um, I think what I'll do is group it into three sort of main areas where we've made some changes to the JCT suite. I think we can group them into three areas being one is uh, the best practice, the second is uh, dealing with feedback from users and making the contracts as user friendly as we can, and the third is dealing with legislative changes. Okay, so best practice first up, obviously JCT is absolutely committed to best practice and those of you that were familiar with the public sector supplement know that we took principles from fair payment issued by the government um, and put them in the public sector form. So the decision was reached, well, given that they reflected best practice, that they ought to be incorporated into the main forms. So we now have fair payment principles incorporated into all the main forms of contract. Uh, the main change there is we now have a, a set of common valuation dates that apply across the whole supply chain and payment dates flowing from those common valuation dates. And the idea there is to allow for a quicker and more predictable cash flow down the supply chain. We've also included monthly payment cycles right up until the end of the project. Uh, you may recall that previously that it, after PC it used to be every two months. And again, that helps with cash flow. And we've also revised processes for dealing with loss and expense claims to make sure that they are dealt with in a more timely and orderly fashion. Yeah, the next then is dealing with feedback from users and what feedback we do is obviously very important to us and we deal with it when we can. So dealing with suggestions that came back to us and also adding in streamlining and simplification where we could. So we've got quite a few bits in this category but just to pick out a, pick out a few. Uh, we've put in some operative provisions to allow for people to call for parent company guarantees and bonds. 
JCD recognises that they are very often called for, so we've added standard clauses to deal with them. Um, you also may recall that in previous editions, there was quite a lengthy se section in the contract particulars dealing with all the requirements for uh, collateral warranties and third-party rights, you know, beneficiaries, how you deal with some key terms and so on. And again, the JCT recognised that actually on the whole, parties just tend to adopt their own rules rather than fill in the contract details in, in the particulars. So that's come out, and what we do instead is refer to a document that's incorporated by reference that's supposed to set out all the necessary details. And for those that are, people that are worried about this, there is in fact a model form of particulars that's available on the JCT website, so you can see and remind yourself what you need to include. <coughs> Still on the topic of third-party rights then, um, subcontractor level, um, where we had just an option for collateral warranties previously, we've now included third-party rights as an alternative, uh, recognising that third-party rights are increasingly well understood and used, um, and are helpful in the right situation, so this is just another option to try and help streamline the process of giving interested parties rights when they are required. Another thing we've done is look at the insurance options, particularly around existing structures. Um, again, looking at situations which are quite common, where employers are tenants in multi-tenanted buildings, where it's sometimes not possible for the employer to take out insurance of the existing structure. JTT has given you another option to deal with in option C now, to refer to an alternative insurance structure in those sort of circumstances. Other areas where we've made things more streamlined, particularly around Clause 4, which deals with payment, we've tried to reset that so that it follows the payment flow you are likely to follow um, in your project, rather than previously where you might find some things dealing with final accounts fairly early on in the process, uh, followed by interim payments. So hopefully that the, the, the logical flow is more orderly. We've consolidated the payment and pay less notice provisions and we've also consolidated the insurance provisions and moved them over to clause 6 so that there's not a lot of repetition in the insurance schedule and they're easier to follow within clause 6. Okay, so that's some areas uh, where we've responded to user feedback and made things more streamlined. So we've incorporated the CDM 2015 regulations changes from the supplement We've also taken the opportunity to include provisions which demonstrate compliance with the public contract regulations so that public sector users are confident that when they're using these contracts they know they're in compliance. Richard mentioned BIM, as well as including the fair payment provisions from the public sector supplement, we've also included the BIM provisions from the public sector supplement. And again this is in recognition of the ever wider adoption of BIM. So what we've done is allow for the inclusion of a BIM protocol where it's used as a contract document and we've amended the provisions dealing with information flow to enable a BIM protocol to operate where it's being used. So there you go, I think that was quite a brief summary of some of the main changes to the 2016 suite and the reasons for them. Uh, and I suggest if you've got any questions, ask one of us over a glass rather than raising them now. We're also looking at the possibility of creating standard form parent company guarantees and bonds to stand alongside the operative provisions I mentioned earlier on. And yes, absolutely right, we're going to start work on the next edition. So JCD welcomes uh, any feedback you might have on what we currently have and areas where you might like to see changes so we can take that into account. <coughs> So, um, there we are. If you're already using the 2016 suite, you're in very good company. There's lots of people doing so already. If you're not, buy that box set immediately and start using it. Um, but otherwise, that's enough from me, I think, and it's just time to enjoy a drink.